Stay on the horse, Willie, and uh, Mr. Doyford, could I have one of you and Willie together, please? Right, and Willie on the horse. horse. Lovely, that's it now, this way. Go along this way, everybody. I thought William rode a wonderful race the way he came through on the rail. Oh, he was wonderful, wonderful. The horse was wonderful, too. Hold it! Uh, could you hold that, Mr. Dysock? Hold it, you must be joking, you must be joking. <laughs> could I move you all round this way a little bit? Could I move you all round, lovely? All come round. That's it now. In nice and closely together now. One each side of the horse, please. Uh, cuddling the horse, that's it. My brother don't like horses. Isn't that right, Mickey? I uh, should be, and I picked him tonight. I? When he was, he was no iron than that. I said to Tony, Tony, I said, that's the one for us. Really? What a tiny fool he must have been. Did you see him then, Mr. Marlborough? I know, ma'am. One each side, please. Just one more. In Ireland, I think you said. Eh? Yeah, that's where we picked him up, yeah. Hey, Willie, you've done a good job out there. Tony, me see our right son. It's that last spell on the way he peed on the rest of the field. Come on. Let's get this picture took. Where do you want us? One each side, Mr. Dysart. Uh, both of you cuddling the horse, yes? And everybody in closer. That's nice, lovely. We'll be having a little party at the club later, are you, ladyship? Uh, a few bottles of bubbly, you know. Oh, how lovely. You're welcome. Always welcome. Thank you. Big smiles, everybody. This way now. Big smiles. Lovely. Now. Uh, <clears throat> I've uh, been through this. Yes, sir. And uh, I think you're right. We never get a conviction. So we drop it, then. Sorry. A lot of work for nothing, I'm afraid. Get used to that in this department. Yeah, nature of the job, Hicks. Oh, I wasn't complaining, sir. Uh, there was something else. Oh, yes. Uh, this uh, mileage report for that new car you've acquired. Oh, thank you, sir. Now, uh, you understand that you're only permitted to claim the allowance when you use the car for official purposes. Yes, sir. Or if public transport is either unavailable or unsuitable. Which is hardly ever. Quite. Thank you. Busy, Inspector? No, sir. Deceptive? Hmm? Appearances? Oh, yes, they can be, sir. It's just routine bumps. Incidentally, Lintock are down another three bob again today. Lintock? The entertainment group, yes. It looks as though their shares are falling through the floorboards. Is that of some particular interest to you? Indeed it is. The Dysart brothers are big shareholders. I like to think of them losing money. You know, sometimes, Gamble, I think you've got the Dysarts on the brain. Now, mm. Put that away, will you, and get rid of some of this, please. Seems fine, Mr. Oaktop. Now, what about our holdings in Lintock? Something wrong there, eh? Ah, uh, yes. Uh, they have slipped a little lately. Slipped? My brother and me put 100,000 into Lintock. If we sell out now, do you know what we get? 17,000. That's diabolical, isn't it? I wouldn't advise selling, Mr. Dysart. The company is basically very sound. The shares are bound to come back. If they're basically very sound, why is everybody getting out? Lintock is an entertainment group. Traditionally, such companies do best when the market is bullish. Conversely, they're the first affected in times like the present. Times like the present. Listen. We're on three clubs, bingo halls, amusement concessions up and down the coast. They're making a bomb, right, Mick? That's right. If we can do it, why can't Lintock? With respect, Mr. Dysart, I think you'd find that Lintock have rather more complicated problems. Yeah, what well, they did last year. They bought Milford Lodge. You know, the Dick of Tepperdale Racing Stable. They're going to start a Texas-style holiday ranch. Now, where do they get these crummy ideas? I was at Boston the other day, Tom. The place is still empty. Sure. Somebody saw there was no prospects. Look at the money they've tied up. Now, as shareholders, we've got a right to complain, haven't we? Of course, gentlemen. It's your prerogative if you feel the company's being mismanaged. It was on my advice you bought Lintock, wasn't it? Yeah. Well, their past performance has been excellent. And I'm confident that this is just a temporary patch. OK, all right. You're the expert. Yeah, now, if Lintock were your only holding, I'd see some reason for concern. But your investments generally, particularly the industrials, are showing a very healthy profit at the moment. What are we up? Oh, Mick, fill up uh, Mr. Aycock's glass. There's a good lad. Got it. Well, I haven't a precise figure, but uh, 
Here's your quarterly return, Mr. Dysart. Uh, there are one or two points to which I should draw attention. Did you miss something in the small print? The sergeant, come here, look at this. Am I wrong, or is that a white patch on that animal's head? Well, that's a bit of the bridle. No, underneath it, look. That's a star, isn't it? Well, it's hard to say. Why? Because horses don't change their spots or acquire them, do they, Sergeant? What are you getting at? Look, I saw pictures of them when they first got this horse. Well, the Dysarts get their pictures in the paper every week. It's a hobby. Look, last year, their horse had about as much white in it as a Trinidad steel band. Now, all of a sudden, it's got a star in its head. Well, it could be just a picture, you know. Last year, their horse ran like a sack of turnips. It had one outing and came last. This year, it's coming first. In other words, you think that the popular club owners are running a ringer and this isn't a real orange bull? Well, what do you think? I think you've been after the dice out so long, you're getting desperate. Yeah? Well, I still think it's worth an inquiry. Not this evidence. Look, if you said that was Mick Jagger in the middle, nobody would argue. All right, all right, Sergeant. I'll get the original. Hello, give me the art editor of the star, will you? Yeah. It could be them being careless, you know. They've had a long run. Twelve years without a conviction. Only because people are scared. Scared of them, too scared to talk or complain. Well, they're respectable. They have legitimate businesses. They go to charity dinners and have their pictures taken with a mayor. So what? They're in every filthy racket from here to Bristol. Fraud, extortion, vice, you name it, the dice arts are on a percentage. Yes, so they can afford good lawyers. They've got to slip up sometime. All I'm saying is that before you take off after the dice arts, you need a case that's concrete, top and bottom. Oh, would you be trying to teach me my job, Sergeant? That's all it is, you know, a job, not a crusade. Turn that damn thing off. You're still angry because the dice art made a fool out of you three years ago. A four, and they didn't make a fool out of me, Sergeant. The DPP decided that the case wasn't strong enough, that's Which, all. Which, as Proud said, is the nature of the job. Look, I'm always having cases pulled out from under me, but I don't take it so personally. Hey, Gamble. Ah, Mr. Lennox, look, there's a picture on the front page of the star. I wondered if... He... Yes, that's it, yes. I wondered if you could let me have the original. Also, I'd like a copy of the photographs that you took last year of the same horse. What? Uh, why not? I see. When was this? Yes. No, 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 of course. Yeah. Yes, I know him. Right. Thanks. Well, there we are. No picture. Why not? Lennox said that it was taken by a freelance photographer called Monty Lewis. He collected the negative an hour ago. It seems that the dice arts were so delighted with the picture that they want enlargements. Oh. Oh. And you still think I'm wrong about Orange Borsch? Well, if you're right, they'll have enlarged that picture right off the chimney, won't they? Well, there's still a chance he's got it. He only collected it an hour ago. Oh, dash round and grab it then. Well, uh, he's like that with the dice arts. He's got the photographic concession in their club. So you'll tip them off that you're inquiring about his horse? Mm. Well, we'll have to think of another approach then, won't we, Inspector? They're coming, coming. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Lewis, yes, of course, I recognise you. Do you remember me? Gee, thank you, I was in the Golden Domino on Tuesday. You took my picture. I did, I'm sorry, oh, madam. Have it, Mr. Lewis, it's terribly important. Did I take your address for that before? Uh, no, I don't think you did, but it must be here somewhere. Hey, 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 those are in order! But to find that picture, you don't understand, my husband will kill me. Hey, hey, wait, what is this you doing? Oh, don't you stand there, help me find it. Look, if I didn't ask for your address, I haven't got your photograph, I don't know what it's on about. I was sitting at the corner table near the stairs. I was with my friend. He's a Mexican-looking gentleman. Hey, look, what you get over? You're ruining my boils. It's a completely innocent relationship, of course. He's teaching me to tango. Look, hey, will you wait? Look, will you give over? I, I, I don't take photographs of people without permission. It's a club rule. Oh, well, it's a couple of the next time we photographed. But we must have been in the picture. The camera was pointing straight at us. Well, I doubt very much whether you were in focus. So I don't know what you're worrying about. Oh, you don't know my husband. He's starting to follow me now. Older men get so crazily jealous, don't they? Aye, come on. You can say I haven't got your picture. Well, there must be some more. I'm willing to pay. Hey, just leave us alone. Look at the mess you've made. Hey, you hey. Any more? Look, come on. I'm going to be hours tidy in this lot. About out. Oh, come on, away. Oh. Was he mad? Oh. It's my husband. Hey. I'm dying if he finds me. Oh. And you can't go in there, come back. Where is she? Hey, my wife I saw her come up here. I think you must have made a mistake, sir. I don't think so. I'll murder that little bitch. 
What's in there? Nothing. We'll soon see. You can't go in there. That's my dark room. Get out of my way. I'll teach you the trick, mate. That's funny. I could have sworn I saw her. I told you, sir. You made a mistake. Are you sure you haven't seen her? Look, sir, I don't know your wife, do I? I mean, why should she come up here? Are you married? No. Biggest mistake I ever made. Anything in trousers from Boy Scouts to belly dancers. I beg your pardon? Well, it's all right for you. You don't know what it's like, do you? Sir, there are some stairs down at the end of the passage. Perhaps you went out that way. Hey. I don't suppose you tango, do you? Hey. No. Or don't dance at all. Not a step. You can come out now. Has he come? Oh, God, I'm nearly died when he stuck his head around the door. I was hiding behind your bench. <laughs> Did he say dreadful things about me? He usually does. You mean it's happened before? Oh, it's such an old bear. Trying to stop me having all my fun. I've seen him round somewhere. What does he do? Oh, boring, boring insurance. Not like your work. I'd love to learn photography. Don't suppose I could persuade you to teach me sometime, could I? No. It causes enough trouble as it is. Come on, out. Bit thin, Gamble. It could be the end of the wedge, sir. Look, I'd like permission to investigate further. But how? You said the original of that photograph has disappeared. There's no other evidence? No, there's a full description of every fall registered in the general stud book. I could check there, sir. Now, look, Gamble, I'm just as anxious as you are to see the dice arts put away. They're a tricky pair. One false move. There'll be writs flying about our heads like snow. Well, I I'm not going to go in there and turn over their books, sir. They need never know about this inquiry until it's completed. Oh, yes. The last time you said that, their lawyers were knocking on the old man's door within 24 hours. Besides, I'm not at all sure that it's our job. Racing a ringer is fraud. And a tuppenny head is selling blades. Not big enough to interest the dice hearts, a rich men gamble. Well, I didn't suggest that we're going to do it for the money. Well, how then? Well, they're ex borstal boys. They smoke the fattest cigars in town. I mean, big stars accept cabaret bookings with them. And anyone with the title who remembers to call them Mickey and Tony, well, they can drop a couple of thousand quid at their gaming tables and pay them back with monopoly money. Snobbery? Is that what you mean? Well, exactly, sir. They're a couple of climbers. I mean, all they want out of racing is to parade around the enclosure leading the winner. Do you know Captain Marber at all? Well, the trainer, no, sir. Well, I do. Slightly. And I can tell you he's very highly regarded in racing circles. He used to work for the Duke of Thetford. He'd never lend himself to a deception of this kind. It couldn't be done without his knowledge. And do you know Susan, his daughter, sir? No. Well, I know her, slightly. And I can tell you, she's a reckless shemmy player. And she owes the Dice Hearts over 4,000 quid. Oh. oh. Well, do I have permission to investigate, oh, yes, I still think it's a waste of your time and the department's. Look, I've got a contact at the jockey club. I could get down there, check their records, and be back by midnight. You have to examine the horse, then. Oh, Sergeant Hicks is already on her way out to do that, sir. I was sure you'd approve. Hello? Uh, hello, Mr. Lennox. So I was? Inspector Gamble? No, he's not been round here. You what? The race course picture? Uh, no, I'm afraid I had a bit of an accident with it in the dark room. It was, uh, it was destroyed. Yeah. Well, uh, thanks anyway. Keep it straight, man. For what? Chasing the hostesses. <laughs> I'm Monty Lewis was in. Just a lot? Yeah, man, here. Right. Burn them. Hi, <laughs> lady Sarah said she wanted one of these, didn't she? She can bloody want. Them pictures could get us in dead lumber, son. 
Hey, right, Lockie, you've spotted that white patch later. 7-0 for details. Well, coming through the bar just now. Mon Dieu, what is wrong with the bar? The cherries. Hi. Hey? They're not maraschinos. Yeah? Yeah. Ordinary glass, they're kind of taking it anywhere. What'd you do? Those customers around, I just had a word in the barman's hair. He won't try a stroke like that again. Thieving git. I told me to fill him in. Yeah, but bleeding comic. He's half your age and twice your size. Hey, you think I couldn't do it? Is that it? Ah, shut up. Look, I've told you before, we'll have that kind of thing now. We don't get involved. There's blokes like Asher always willing to earn themselves a few quid. Asher, I could take Asher with one hat. Yeah, so you could with a blade in it. Look, there's a 1,200 quid Persian carpet you've been spitting and sweating all over. Go and have a shower and put a nice suit on, eh? And Mick, don't wear one of them yobby bootlaces as ain't Nevada. I can't do nothing right now, Dave. Got nothing pleases you. Holy kid, will you? I just wanted you to dress smart, that's all. Yeah, well, you're always going to be told. Like the other night, coming back from the races, nag, 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 and what have I done? Bloody nothing. Nothing. You know, said the horse peed on the field. What's it for the bloody lady, Sarah? You said peed. Now, cow's jaw dropped a mile. I'm not getting at you, Mickey. But that way, mix him with the top drawer. You've got to comport yourself, see? Yeah. Is it Mr. Lewis to see you, sir? Monty Lewis. Right, send him in right away. Well, what have you got this time? Trouble, I think, Tony. Mate? All right, let's have it. Take a look at that, see if anything strikes you. Do you recognise that one? Hey, that's Campbell, isn't it? What about Campbell? He's after that picture I took. How do you know? Well, from the start, just rang us up. Said the police had been inquiring and I asked if I'd been able to help them. And did you help them? Oh, come on, Tony. Go on. Well, it all connected up then, see? This bloke come round my place this afternoon, had a girl with him. Well, they really put the pressure on. They turned my place over, dark room, the loft. Fetch yeah, warrant. I didn't know there were coppers, did I? I mean, they conned me. Get the lawyer shut up. That gamble is a chance. I mean, he's always taking liberties. One of these days, caramba, I'll spit him in half with my stiletto. Are you your ringing tone? Did you get that? Ringing tone? Shut oh. up. All right, I only asked who you're ringing. Marlborough. Oh, he's not a lawyer. Come on, come on. Marlborough? It's me, Tony Dysart. Yeah, listen. I want to talk to you about some horse meat. Sergeant Hicks from the fraud squad. Oh, how do you do? I'm hoping you can help me. Oh, in what way, Mr. Hicks? Sergeant. Oh, yes, of course. I understand you have a horse here called Orange Borsch. Oh, what exactly is the trouble? Oh, no trouble, Captain. I just wonder if I might see the animal, that's all. That's going to be rather difficult, I'm afraid. Oh, why? Dead. The horse is dead. What? Yes, he slipped while training. Broke a high end fetlock. Had to be destroyed. Oh, when did this happen? Oh, an hour or two ago. Oh, so the carcass is still here? Uh, no, I don't care to have horses shot on the premises. Not if it can possibly be avoided. Seems to upset the others, you know. So where is the animal now? I sent him to a slaughterer. I see. Which one? A uh, Joe Priestman. You know him. He's a bit of a rough diamond, but he's very efficient. Oh, thank you, Captain. Well, I'm sorry we had to drag all this way for nothing. You should have given me a tinkle. I understand you collected a horse from Captain Marlborough's racing stables today. No, I didn't collect it. The captain sent it. Is the animal here now? No, I don't like to keep him hanging around. I've got no cold room here, you see. So you killed it straight away? 
I should have thought you'd know the regulations, being a police lady. I know the regulations, Mr. Freeson. Animals delivered to a knacker must be slaughtered at once if in pain, otherwise within two days. And this animal was in pain, was it? You'd be in pain if you'd broken one of your pretty little fetlocks, my love. Which fetlock did it break? I didn't look. Really? The captain would know. Ask him. How have you disposed of the carcass? Quartered it, sold the meat, burnt the rest. Including the hide? No, there's not much call for horse hide these days. A lot of the firms in Walsall are closed. And the hair? Oh, sir, you must be joking. Boxing job? Not worth it. But according to those regulations, Mr. Priestman, the hair must be cut off the neck of any horse, ass or mule. You're getting at me, aren't you? No, I'd just like to see some of that hair, that's all. Burnt. I see. This animal came in two or three hours ago, and now, to coin a phrase, there's neither hide nor hair left of it. That's it. You're very quick. Well, you know what they say. Time is money. Where is your register? Eh? Section 5, subsection 6. The knacker must keep in a book particulars of all the animals brought to him with names and addresses of the owners. The police may inspect this book. I was just going to fill it in. Where are you? Inspector Kent? Sergeant Hicks. Are you busy? I don't know why the light was on. What are you doing here? I was looking for your boss, actually. Is he about? If you mean Superintendent Proud, he'll be down at St. Stephen's Hall. He's a late preacher, you know. Uh, no, no, I meant Inspector Gamble. Oh, I don't know where he is. Oh, well, it's, uh, it's not important. Well, Victoria, long time no see. How are things in the wicked world of fraud? So, so. How are things in the regional crime squad? Well, I can't grumble. I've had three commendations this year. Yes, we all know. Congratulations. Oh, no, it's just luck. All good information. You don't change much, do you? Still the same old snappy replies? Disappointed? No, no, no. I got over my disappointment five years ago. That's good. Doesn't seem like five years sometimes. We'll soon be claiming that pension, Jim. Thank you. Chicken farm or pub? Get that knife out of my ribs, will you? I'm still only 39. Sorry. Touchy subject, is it? I'm no older than Gamble. Oh, he's 36. Really? Is that all? No, oh, very funny. It's the indoor life, I suppose. <laughs> Not as healthy as all that dashing about in cars, you mean? Oh, absolutely. You know, sitting around the office at this time of night could lead to immorality. And what are you doing, anyway? Trying to write a message to the inspector. And after that? Going home. I've got a better idea. Come and have a drink on regional crime squad expenses. That's tantamount to fraud, Inspector. Victoria, you're the prettiest sergeant I know. I might even pay for the drink myself. Sergeant Higgs? Uh, John here. Hello, where are you? I'm at the jockey club. What are you doing? I'm fending off Inspector Kent with one hand and trying to write a message to you with the other. I should use both hands on him. <laughs> What's the message? Well, um, Marlborough says the horse has been sent to a knacker. You mean he's dead? Yeah, he claims he sent it to a slaughter called Joe Priestman. Well, I've been to see Priestman, and if he killed that horse, then I'm Donald Duff. You mean there's been a double cross? You think the horse is still alive? Well, a young racehorse must be worth more than a thousand cans of pet food. Well, they must have it stashed away somewhere. Yes, I'm sure of it. And what's more, I have a pretty shrewd idea where we'll find it. Look, um, call in at my place on the way back from London, OK? Mm. Right, bye. Bye. I always thought the fraud squad was a gentleman's life, nine to five. <laughs> you uh, said something about a drink. Did I? Mm -hmm. Oh, I'll sue you for breach of promise. So tell me about this woman, Copper. Well, there's nothing else to tell. How did she left you? She went to Priestman. I don't know. We know. He took the horse to Priestman. Did he do the job? Well, that is his job. Did you see him? I don't know what you mean. Now, speak as the English are. Was you there when an act got the chop? No, of course not. I drove straight back to the stables. I didn't hang around. Put the marching money in, so. Why? What's all this about? There's this rumour, see. It's going about the priestman kept our horse and stashed it someplace. Well, priestman wouldn't do a thing like that. Why should he? Or should anybody do anything? Gelt. But I've known no policeman for years. I'm sure you're wrong. You can vouch for him, can you? We've got your personal guarantee. I can give you my word that policeman is absolutely straight. 
Well, that's all right, then. You see how careful we've got to be. Well, if that's what you wanted to see me about... Yes. You can buzz off now, old man. We'll be in touch when we need you. Arrivederci. Get Asher. Get him to call on this priestman. Hello. Hi, uh, Joe. This is Captain Marlborough here. I've just seen the dice cards. Oh, good evening, Mr. Kim. It's my father. Oh, hello, Inspector. You want Vicky? <laughs> yes, please. No, oh, she hasn't come home yet. You yeah, what? Haven't seen her since this morning. Well, that's strange. Her car's here. Well, that's funny. Well, she certainly hasn't come in. I see. Uh, would you ask her to give me a ring when she does Yes, come? of course I will. Oh, she can't have gone far. Uh, right. Good night, Mrs. Kim. Good night, Inspector. You ain't tying up a cute old liner. All right, don't rush me. Hey, you know what, son? What? If you weren't a copper, I could fancy it. Cut that. Out. You know, I enjoy myself tonight, son. Like old times. Look, I've told you before. Any slag can pull up this kind of caper. It don't take brains, you know. Yeah, but it takes nerves, doesn't it? There's nothing wrong with my nerves, son. Don't you worry yourself. All right, I didn't say there was Look, son, just get that bloody rope tied. It's different for you, Tom. What is? Well, I mean, like you like doing all the planning in that. Now, me. I like to see it happen. Oh, my God. There's no doubt about you, is there? You really are one of the working classes, ain't you? Well, we don't get out much nowadays, you and me. Not like we used to. No, we wouldn't be out now if we could have had a couple of trustees to do this for us. Yeah, but there wasn't time, was there? There. That should hold her. You reckon? I learned them not to Borstal. There was this old boy Scaglings, you see. He used to come round smoking a pipe. Hey, oh, you know what? He only taught us how to make a rope ladder. Come on, we've got to get back. Well, you got here quick, sir. What? Well, didn't you come? Oh, I just put a car call in town. This door was to open. I'll take a look. Somebody looking for something, eh, sir? Well, what time this happened? Well, this will be the car now. Hello, John. I thought you were in London. No, no, Jimmy, yes, I was. Now, don't do that. This place can't have been dusted for years. Well, this looks like the sort of job for the city CID. Well, what's your name? The Davis, sir. Did you come on the 10th? Yes, sir. Then this should have been found by the late turn man. Oh, well, we've been working double... So... Stay with it, French. I have smelled just a dusty kill there. Here. Yeah. Sir. Hey, when are we going to get some kip? We're waiting to hear from Asher. I've told you twice. Look, he won't find Priestman now. He'll find him. Hey, do you like my cufflinks, son? Yeah, yeah, they're all right. How fast? Very nice. It's what they call a semi-precious stone. It's nice the way they catch the light, isn't it? And it cost a pony. Did they see still kipping? Who? Now, Chelsea. Do you see the way I carried her? 
Like a feather. I didn't need you to help me, you know. How long she staying there? Till we find where Priestman's hidden that nag. Suppose somebody finds her before Asher finds Priestman. Oh, that place has been closed up for years now. We'll find her there. All right, Joyce Hart. Where's Sergeant Hicks? Hey, he's still you're trespassing, you know. He knows all about that, Mickey. He knows all about the law, this fella. You know you can get 14 years for kidnapping. My, my, 14 years. That's a grubby, Mickey. 14 years. Oh, that's me now, Inspector. Come on, I dare you. I'll ask you once again. Where's Sergeant Hicks? You see, you're big, Inspector. You're a little piece of a more, a more. So you know Sergeant Hicks is a policewoman. Get out of Where here, Where were you? At we don't talk to coppers, mate. Except when we've got our lawyers with us. Look, you've gone over the top this time, Tony. Snatching police officers is something nobody gets away with. We don't know what you're raving about. Then you'd better start remembering. Now, don't lay a finger on me, copper. I remember what happened last time, Gamble. Yeah, the last time you got stopped with us, we had this from your chief constable. I can't give you ten seconds. Don't try. We keep her up here for a giggle life. In accordance with the request of your solicitors, he says, I'm writing to apologise for the in in intemperate and overzealous conduct. Hey, that's it. He knows it off by our tone. Now I'll show you what intemperate means. Hey! John, for God's sake, what the hell's wrong with you? He's gone right into you! Man, Mr. Crazy! Hey. Get him out of here. You'd better come with me, I think. Come on. I haven't followed you. You'll be hearing from our lawyers in the morning, Gamble. I'll be on to them first thing. Come on. That phone's on. We'll get into you. They know. Hey, what's for you? Hi. That glass head on top of the car. I'd have caught him if Kent hadn't stopped me. Hey, Gamble's no fool. He knows what he's doing. He always does know what he's doing. Coppers don't start handing out knuckle sandwiches. Get off. What are you handing us? Oh, lots of people like Gustay down, Mickey. And not here. Maybe down the neck. Different. Or maybe she's his tart or something. Well, I mean, he acted like a fella, not like a copper. I don't know. I just don't know, Mickey. Yeah, we're all going into you anyway. He's really got you on the job, hasn't he? He was so sure about the girl for one thing. I, how could he be so sure? He's guessing. No. He knows, Mick. Somehow he knows it was us. He's got to be stopped. He assaulted me, didn't he? That's a criminal offence, old son. If I could get me a good lawyer now, he'd be doing porridge for breakfast. Yeah, well, lawyers don't work this time, and I'd do that. I've got better sense. Right. We get out, top. He owes us a favour. Oak Top, this is Tony Dysart. Oh, did I wake you up? Yeah, well, the day I started early. Listen, something I want you to do for me, and I want it done in the next ten minutes. You and me both. Station Sergeant Wilkins, uh, Superintendent Proud here. Well, I'm expecting a visit from a Mr. Oaktop. What? Well, have you sent him to Inspector Gamble's office? Because I'm in there. Good. And when you see Inspector Gamble and Inspector Kent, tell them I just want to see them when I'm free. Yep. Superintendent Proud. Uh, yes, come in. Just down. Thank you. you have a complaint to make against one of my officers. Yes, indeed. Inspector Gamble. I telephoned the station here as soon as I heard about this extraordinary incident. Yes, I was informed. Unusual hour. It's unusual for a police officer to force his way into private premises and commit an unprovoked act of aggression. Yes, quite so. Well, as I haven't spoken to Inspector Gamble, I can't really comment on the allegation. I felt the case was so serious it was necessary to draw immediate attention to it. Oh, yes. From what I've heard, uh, according to my opinion, Inspector Gamble's mental state is such that you would be wise to relieve him of his duties. Really? I mean that he might be dangerous. I see, so it's your consideration for the public that has caused you to come rushing over here at this hour. I'm merely trying to offer some sensible advice, Superintendent. If he's suspended immediately, it would show the police in a good light in any subsequent proceedings. You mean court proceedings? My client intends to sue. Oh, yes, of course. My client is extremely distressed and shocked. I understand he has severe bruising of the back. Now, why do you keep saying my client? What? I know you, Mr. Oaktop. You work for the Dysharts. 
Got a holding company for them. I'm legally qualified. You don't practice. Does it require a practicing lawyer in order to complain about the conduct of the police? No, it's the right of every citizen. Mr. Dysart could come and complain himself. Why do you have to be dragged into it? I object to your attitude, Superintendent. Mr. Dysart is a man who has built his business from nothing. His past experiences of the police have been such that he prefers not to deal with them personally. I'm beginning to understand how he feels. Yeah, well, I'm sorry if I appear discourteous. Do sit down, please. Thank you. I understand that when somebody makes a serious accusation like this against one of my officers, I have to be clear in my own mind about the whole situation. Mr. Dysart phoned me as soon as Gamble had been taken away by the other officer and asked my advice. When he explained what happened, I offered to represent him. And, as I say, the inspector's action struck me as being so erratic and outrageous, I thought it wise to report the matter at once. Yes, well, as I haven't spoken to Inspector Gamble, I can't really say any more about it. But uh, I'll look into it, Mr. Octop. Thank you. The sooner the better, of course. Both the officers concerned in the incident have been asked to report to me. Good. Well, I won't take up any more of your time. I take it that we should be hearing from Mr. Dysart's real solicitors in due course? I presume so. Good morning, Superintendent. Good morning. Superintendent Proud, we'll ask Mr. Gamble and Mr. Kip... Oh, no, never mind here. Where's Gamble? He's in the canteen getting a coffee, sir. There's one for you if you want it. He'll be up in a moment. Damn idiot. What happened exactly? Well, I didn't see it all, sir, but I imagine the Dysarts provoked him and... Police uh, officer does not allow himself to be provoked, Kent. No, sir. But those two do have a way of needling... Oh, there could be no possible excuse. You say he actually assaulted them? Well, it was really more attempted assault. Just a push and a threat, I suppose. But they'll make the most of it, of course. Yes, well, I shall want a full report. Understand how you feel. Have a pleasant report of the fellow officer. I don't know why I went there in the first place. You, uh... You followed him to the club? Yes, sir. We were both at the scene of a breaking in when suddenly... Well, I don't know what happened, really. He just, just rushed out. No explanation? Not then or since. Extraordinary. He's in a very strange mood, sir. I think he needs a rest. He'll get one. Well? Yes, sir? Well, I've had Mr. Kent's verbal report. Have you anything you want to say? It's just one of those things, sir. I lost my temper, that's all. You lost your temper? Yes. Two of the most litigious, arrogant crooks in England, and you lost your temper. Hmm. All right, Gamble, this is for the record. I understand that earlier today at the Golden Domino Club, you assaulted Tony and Mickey Dysart. I had reason to believe that You've Tony given and reasons Mickey... of the investigation. Meanwhile, consider yourself suspended from all further duties. I'm cautioning you. You know what that means? Yes, sir. All right, let me have your warrant card and your official notebook. Uh, Mr. Kent, I just want three copies of your full written report by midday. And you can go home, Gamble. You'll be notified when you're required. I shall go home when I've found Sergeant Hicks. Hicks? She was snatched from outside our house last night. I found this by a car. Chloroform? Mm. Good God. Are you saying Vicky's been kidnapped? By the Dice Hearts. Well, what the hell have you done about it? I was doing something about it when you interrupted. Yeah. Asher, you found policeman. What, he never saw it? Marlboro. Yeah, go on. Yeah, that figures. Now, son, you can leave that to us. Me and Mickey will deal with the captain. Was that Asher? Yeah. You know what? Policeman never saw that horse. That's what he says. Oh, it's the truth. Asher's got some pretty nasty habits if he thinks he's being mooded. Maybe pretty hard on our things who slipped him up all night. All right, then who's got the bloody thing? It was never delivered. Marlboro but I kept it. How's that for a laugh? Hey, what's he trying to do? Get off sent down. Yeah. I'll tell you something else. It was Marlboro but I tipped off Priestman last night. He's becoming a bit of a nuisance, isn't he? Yeah. He did these people a few favours, and that's what you get. Come on. Yeah. Are you prepared to listen to what I've got to say or not? Not prepared to listen to nonsense, Gamble. 
Keep making these preposterous allegations without a shred of evidence. Well, look, if you'd let me finish, sir, it might not sound quite so preposterous. Oh, go on, go on, get it off your chest. Well, every time the police have had information that might lead to their arrest, the Dysarts have kept five jumps ahead. Now, we've always thought it was because they were too smart, too lucky. But now, when you think about it, it's quite obvious that they must have had help from the inside, from someone very senior. I find it very difficult to believe, Gamble. Well, I didn't want to believe it myself either, sir. Particularly of Jim Kent, but... Well, last night, I had to face up to the idea. I mean, when I phoned Sergeant Hicks from London last night, he was in this office. Now, that was the first time for over a year. Now, I reckon he was snooping for the Dysarts. Until last night, nobody outside this department knew we were interested in the Dysarts, so that doesn't wash. Well, they must have known by last night, sir. I mean, I'd been onto the newspapers, Hicks had been to the stables, and for all I know, that photographer, Monty Lewis, well, he might have rumbled us even earlier. There's a lot of theory. Uh, keep making no, that. Wait a minute, sir. I haven't finished yet. Now, Kent heard her telling me that she believed that Priestman was double-crossing the brothers and that that horse, Orange Borsch, was still alive and that she had a pretty good idea where it was. Well, well, when he passed on that bit of information, it must have been quite a shock. So they, or their goons, went after Priestman, but he wisely left for the country. They must have started sweating then. If they thought that Sergeant Hicks knew where their horse was, and they didn't. And you think that that's why they kidnapped her? Yes, sir. To gain time and to get me off their back while they find the horse. No, I don't know. If it was anybody other than Inspector Kent, I, I might think it a bit more plausible, but he's one of the most successful thief catchers in the Midlands. A man like that wouldn't throw him with a dice up. I'll bet you anything you like that he's with them at this very minute. Why? Because he didn't learn about Hicks being kidnapped until just now. Now, you look shocked, but he looked mad. Now, it's quite obvious that the dice hearts have done this off their own bat, and Kent isn't standing for it. Just a minute, Gamble. What, sir? Are you saying that you held back the news of Hicks's disappearance until you could make use of it? Oh, yes, if you... If you put it like that, yes. Uh, excuse me, sir. I've also jammed down the key, the transmitter key on Kent's car, so we know exactly where he is. Oh, car control. Inspector Gamble here. You're getting too big for your boots. You can't possibly get away with a stunt like this. Oh, Jim, we've got it all worked out. You've got nothing worked out. You're panicked. We just took the girl to keep her mouth shut. For a few hours, that's all. Just while we settled with policemen. You must be mad. We didn't hurt her, did we, Tom? Hardly too stern. Where is she? I was just going to tell you that, son. D don't son me! Look, son. You're forgetting how things stand, aren't you? Down come the brass-bound couple with us, old love. Yeah, you've got to keep in line, mate. We give the orders. You take them. Come free. I asked you what you've done with Sergeant Hicks. And I was just going to tell you. Where is she? Just don't push it. I don't like it. And you're not going to like that big black van when it calls either, Tony. But you're not going to get away with this. You're crazy if you think you can. Look, Jim, it's all over. We don't need the girl no more. Just give us a couple of hours, that's all. Just while we get shot of this horse, which I wish to God I'd never seen. And then you can go and rescue the girl. Information received, right? Big hero. <laughs> yeah. We're doing you a favour, Jim. They'll give you a bloody medal when you bring her home, safe and sound. Look, just tell me where she is. The fact that this car is parked near the cup doesn't prove that he's gone there. No, sir. In fact, he may have a perfectly legitimate reason for going back. It's what he does next that's the most important. Now, if he knows where they're holding Sergeant Hicks... All right, Gamble. Yeah? Yeah. I see. Well, he's left the city, sir. He's heading on along the Conte Road. I suppose you want to take a car and go chasing after him. I was going to suggest that, yes. You look a right pair of idiots if he is on police business. Ah, but he can't be on police duty, can he, sir? I mean, he hasn't attempted to use the car radio yet. You're right. Oh, come on. Got your foot. You dirty... Never mind the compliments, I'll look. Just tell us where the horse is. So that you can shoot it? That is the general idea, yes. I'm not looking this around because of the bloody wasps, you know. People like you shouldn't be allowed near horses. People like us have just ran up and got for paper, aren't we? Bloody worthless paper dropped by Toffee Nose once, just like your daughter. Shall I give him a couple of more straighteners, Sir Alfie? He's an eager lad, this one. I need the practice. You better remember where that GG is, Captain. He's in my old stable. Where? Milford Lodge. On the Duke of Thetford's estate. Oh, my God. Did you hear that? Yeah. Criminal, innit? I could weep. I really could. Come on. Right. Not hurt. 
Large. Well, well, then that's the dice cart horse. That's Orange Borsch. I don't get you. Well, Marlborough used to work here before the Duke sold out, and he knows the place has stood empty ever since. So instead of taking the horse to Priestman, he brought it here and got Priestman to say it had been destroyed. Come on, Jim, I'll bet you're quit. Vicky. What? Do you know who it was? Last night it was the dice cart. Did you see them? No, no, they grabbed me from behind. Well, how do you know? Well, ever since we left that pub, you know, where we had the drinks, they were on my tail. And their Bentley's not exactly unknown. Ah, uh, it's no use. They'll deny it. There'll be 30 people to stay there with the club all night. Jim, how did you know where to find me? Huh? Well, as you say, good information. Almost too good. And what does that mean? They knew I was in that particular pub. It's been bothering me all night how they knew that, but you made a phone call while you were there. Vicky, don't leap to conclusions. But then you turn up here. Only the Dice Hearts could have given you that information. Jim, say something. Tell me I'm wrong. Jim, please. No. You, you're not wrong. Oh, God. Vicky. Vicky, when I called them last night, I had no idea they'd grab you. I told them Priestman hadn't killed the horse, and you knew where it was. Why? Because... So they could get moving and find the damn thing before you let Gamble to it. Well, you've got some sort of a deal with them. <sighs> some deal. How well, sooner or later it had to end like this. Seventeen years of service after this. But... Oh. Are you very involved? Up to my neck. They go, I go. What do you want? Sympathy? Oh, I don't expect you to understand, Vicky. Oh, I... understand. No, I'll never do that. Understand, someone who sells his own colleagues. No, I prefer straight crooks to bent coppers. At least you know where you stand with them. Yeah. I used to feel like that. Well, it's a pity you ever changed, isn't it? Oh, sure. It's a pity coppers that have to meet crooks and they wouldn't get corrupted. But in a CID, you spend half your life mixing with them, drinking with them, getting information, trading little favors for bigger ones. Well, you know what the job's like, Vicky. It's too easy to step over the line and get too far in. How did it happen? Well, years ago, I... I used to go to the Dice Arts Club because it was a good place to pick up information. And one night, I... I had a couple of drinks too many, and... Tony got me into a card game, and... I lost 25 quid. That's how it started. 25 quid. It's not very high, is it? Price of a copper. Since then? Oh, I just got further and further in. I've kept them out of prison for ten years. And in return, they've dropped me the kind of information a straight copper would give his ears for. Is that all they've dropped you? Oh, I haven't made any money out of it, believe me, Vicky. A few meals in the house, a box of stale cigars at Christmas. I don't know what to say. That I'll deserve all I'll get? Well, he's not bent now, is he? 